Hi, my name is Carl Good, and I'm going to show you how to make a bar chart like this one in Adobe Illustrator CS4. Uh, with, um, first of all, so let's go ahead and just get rid of this for now, and uh, we'll, we'll rebuild it. Down here is your bar chart uh, icon, your graph icon. If you click and hold it down, you get a lot of different options which you can explore. They have a bar graph here too, which is basically a horizontal column graph, but I like to call these bar charts. Everybody else does except Adobe. So I'm going to go ahead and if you just click, if you just click on the icon and then click in the center of, of wherever you want on there on your desktop, I mean on your on your Illustrator document, you you can you can input the exact size of this chart for if you're going to be going into a column uh, on on, uh, on the web or on in print. But I'm going to just go ahead and make up one of these, uh, just make up a size because all the principles will apply regardless of how you how you size this thing. Click and drag when you have the icon selected, and you get a uh, spreadsheet here and uh, also a dummy bar. I already have some data uh, uh, that I typed that I copied to the clipboard so I just pasted that in to make to save time. You don't want to ever put any kind of icon image uh, anything but numbers and periods in here or points because it doesn't recognize dollar signs or commas. Uh, if you're doing years um, it'll interpret those years like 2001, 2002, etc. as data that you want to plot so you have to put that in quotes, and that's the way it, it, it sees it as not a number. Up here, you can, um, you can use these little icons for, uh, the first one's for importing data. The second one we're going to use in a minute is for toggling the data back and forth, which I'll show you. I'm not going to talk about these, but this one is the preview. Uh, it's apply what you've done to, to the chart. So let's go ahead and apply it. And you can see right there that we have uh, our fruit at the bottom, uh, price per pound maybe, or whatever, week one and week two over here. Uh, ugly. <laughs> Why they stick it outside the graph out and, and that big and horsey is way beyond me. Um, so we're going to move that and fix that so it doesn't happen. If you toggle this data and make it horizontal, see how it became horizontal back and forth. Uh, this is vertical horizontal. You get it and then and then preview it again. It changes the you, now your your fruit is is keyed on the legend up here and your weeks are down below. Depends on how you want to look at data. We're going to go back to the way it was. And, uh, and close this uh, spreadsheet out by uh, saying goodbye in this little red circle. Then I'm going to take a look at this. Let's, let's go see what we can do by mo how we can modify this. I think this is a pretty okay chart. It's kind of boring. It's, uh, I don't like big, long vertical rules here and that sort of thing. So we're going we're gonna to fix it. I'm going to select the chart with the black arrow and come over to Object, go to Graph, and say Type, the type of, of chart it is. Now you can change that depending on the data. You can make it a horizontal chart. Uh, those kind of some you know some data doesn't apply. Data doesn't apply to all charts, so you have to be careful. Now uh, you can change the column width here by by here we'll exaggerate these a little bit just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, there's no preview there. You can see so you can adjust the size of the bars. Um, there's also no keyboard command for getting back to the type of uh, the graph options here, which is unfortunate. Uh, now, uh, one of the another thing we can do is we can add the legend across the top. That so you see these two little guys right here. We can move them along the top just by clicking that little button. And again, I have to go back to the graph type style and then um, and to do more modifications. Now I want to these little tick marks along the side here on the on the value axis. The one on the bottom is called the um, category axis. I'm going to go to graph and say value axis, and I'm going to say Right here, tick marks, length, short. I'm going to say make those the full width. And you can also put how many. You can put every other one. You can do, do you know, there are a lot of options here. Also, if you don't want this to end at 8, say you want it to end at 10, or you don't want a zero base, which is a bad thing, but if you don't want a zero base, you can override the calculated values by typing in your own number, and this scale will become what you want it to. And these bars will adjust themselves to, to, suit, to fit that. So we'll take that off. We like what we have there. I'm going to say OK. And here you see these bar, these these lines have gone all the way across. These are still pretty ugly. They're they're really tall for some reason. I don't know they were, or or fat when they were out here. Um, pretty ugly stuff. Now this this is all grouped together, and uh, you know it, you want to keep a bar chart grouped because you want to keep a graph grouped if it's involves a lot of complex data that it's recording. For example, the a year of the Dow Jones. You have three hundred and sixty five numbers there. You always want to keep that. Uh, link to the data because if it's not, uh, you can unlink the, this very easily by just trying to ungroup the chart or by ungrouping the chart. If I ungroup it, you get a sign that says 
There's a graph here. If you ungroup this thing, you're screwed. You will no longer be able to access its graph style, its data, or change its graph designs. Um, so I'm going to cancel that for now. Um, but you know, a simple chart like this, I prefer to work ungrouped because, for example, it won't let you de delete anything. If I select this line and try to delete it, it says you can't do that because it's it's linked to the data. You know, you can't do that. Um, and you have, what you have to do is actually uh, come here and hide that line by uh, going going like this and uh, saying no no oh, I didn't select it I deselected it accidentally and then saying no no line there that gets to be kind of a drag to do that so I like to just ungroup the graphic and go go for it so uh, but that said if you want to keep it grouped you can double click on you hold the option key down and double click on one 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 object oh I'm holding the wrong key down double click and it'll select whatever subgroup that is. So you see I just selected only the gray bars. If I want to select just the black bars, I can just click twice and it will select just the black bars. But again, I'm going to ungroup this object arrangement, ungroup, and say OK. I want to do it anyway. And we can start seeing, we, now these are still, all of the bars are grouped. I'm going to go ungroup one more time. And now just the gray bars are grouped together and I'm going to keep them all together. And now these lines, these horizontal lines, are uh, are tick marks are are grouped with the numbers with the font. I'm going to object ungroup that one time, and now you'll see that just the lines are are grouped together and and the numbers are grouped together. So we have a lot of little individual groups of things, and it's kind of nice. We don't want this to be here. I don't like these. I don't. We don't need any of this lower stuff. I'm going to just delete that and and. I'm also going to delete using the white arrow, the, sub, the direct selection tool, that last one, that last line because these these bars form a base of their own. It's a little more elegant that way. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of these because I don't want rules on either of these. These have outlines around them, and it looks a little cartoony and hokey to have lines around your bars. So I'm going to just have just say no line on all of those, and we're going to change the color a little bit too.